I know this must be so difficult for you. Yeah, tried everything. <laughs> Got a little late and everything, but look, uh, Rafa's a deserving champion. He, he just played fantastic. <laughs> Well, I mean, he, he's one of the greatest champions that this game has ever seen. He's, he's had it all and he, he, he keeps on showing to the world why, you know, why he's one of the biggest legends of tennis history. So I have greatest respect for him and uh, he's my greatest rival of all time, for sure. As with all great stories, this one begins in Mallorca, Spain. To see whether this young man is able to match his opponent in terms of physique and mental aptitude. Turning pro in 2001, Nadal would go on to become the youngest player ever to win an ATP Tour level match at only 15 years old. So as he walks down the tunnel onto the center court for the first time, he'll get a terrific ovation. Nadal would spend much of his youth training next to former world number one and fellow Spaniard, Carlos Moya. And he's done it! It's called out, but what a sensational moment this is. Now Moya, he was an avid pure drive user, and at the time, so was Nadal. In 2004, Bablat would rethink what the pure drive could mean for spin, re-engineering and remarketing the stick, especially for Rafa. And then this happened. And then this. And this, and it kept on happening. And while it looked like Rafa was upgrading every couple of years to the new Aero Pro Drive or the new Pure Aero, reputable sources agree that racket hasn't changed much since the original version came out in 2004. So how did Bablat engineer a racket to help Rafa win, even while his game has evolved? All right, so to understand what's so special about this racket, we first need to understand how the racket actually behaves on impact. So when you swing a racket, there are three axes that we need to think about. So the first axis comes at the grip where you actually um, swing the racket. That is where we measure swing weight. So there's a pivot point um, at about seven inches up the racket, and that is meant to correspond with where your hand ends and um, the racket comes around with your wrist in this kind of motion. The next pivot point is the balance point. So the spec we care about here is that balance point spec, of course. And now the final axis that we care about is down the center, um, going from the tip to the tail of the frame. And the spec that's important here is called twist weight. So at the beginning of Rafa's career, he was using the Aero Pro Drive in its stock form, and it came with a swing weight of about 330. The new Pure Aero comes in at a swing weight about 326 strung. The Blade 98, it's heavier than this racket, is at 317. Um, so 330 strung is really quite heavy for such a light racket. Now the next spec is the balance point. Nothing too crazy here, just 32 centimeters up from the butt cup of the racket, so that's about the midpoint there. Now the last thing is the twist weight number, so we're talking about this axis here. Now this is what is pretty unusual. It's a super low twist weight, coming in at just over 11 points. It's measured at the same way you would measure swing weight. So the further the weight is away from this center line towards three and nine, um, the higher your twist weight is going to be and the more stable it's going to feel on off-center hits. Most rackets these days come in around somewhere like 14. A really stable racket with a lot of weight at 3 and 9 is going to be at like 15. 
So knowing that this thing is closer to 11 is crazy. That makes the racket feel really quite unstable when you hit it off center. You really gotta make sure you're centering the ball. Now, why would this be important for Rafa? Well, at the end of the day, it all comes down to maneuverability. The lighter your racket is across all of these axes, the more maneuverability you're gonna have and the faster you're gonna be able to swing that racket. But if we remember, his swing weight was actually pretty high. 330. So we've got a really low twist weight, so Rafa can really accelerate that racket extremely fast, but we've got a high swing weight, so when he does impact the ball, he's getting a huge amount of spin and a huge amount of power behind every shot. Now this is just classic Rafa, maximum swing speed maximum power and maximum spin. Now as Rafa got older, he needed more things from his game, so he added some weight. Weight came at the tip and weight came in the handle to counterbalance it. Never in his career has Rafa explicitly added weight at three and nine. Um, I think this is really to keep that aggressive mindset where he can swing as fast as he can, but by boosting up that swing weight, um, that gives him easier access to depth. This is something we saw him really need after he lost like seven finals in a row to Djokovic because Djokovic was putting the ball back so deep and Nadal started struggling with depth. So today, Rafa's final spec is a 360 swing weight and a 342 gram strung weight. That includes his insane 15L gauge RPM blast his overgrip on his grip size 2 and his little babylat dampener in the middle. So I have customized this exact example up to Rafa's final spec that is about 12 grams at the tip and then only 5 grams in the handle. So let's head on to the court and see how it plays. So Simon, now that we've both had a chance to check out the Aero Pro Drive in the customized form, what were your initial impressions coming into the test basically completely blind? Well, initially holding the racket, I was overcome with uh, the sensation that I had the spirit of Raphael Nadal in me. More than any other Babolat uh, conveyed that to me. And uh, I carried that through into the match where I noticed that it had a really strong feeling as I swung through the ball. So I, I would agree with that. Simon is usually a bit of a soft baller on the court, but he was hitting some winners with this racket. He definitely usually doesn't. He also usually hits completely flat, like complete pancakes, and he was getting actually some arc that was quite surprising to me. But what did you think of the off-center shots here? When I found that my weight transfer wasn't done perfectly, I often found the bottom of the net with the ball, which is not an unusual position for me to be in, but it did encourage me to focus on that weight transfer and really make sure I swung through the ball every single time. Yeah, I think this racket really punishes you for having poor footwork or not committing fully to your shot. Like all things that I have. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, even an athletic specimen <laughs> such as myself struggles quite a bit to use the customized Aero Pro Drive to its full potential. I think like you've really got to be physically strong and have great endurance because like by the end of the hitting session for me personally the racket's too heavy. I would agree with that. I think the ball speed that comes out of this racket is really high though. Once I've lined it up if I've shifted my weight completely through the ball I can get some of the highest ball speed with the Aero Pro Drive than any other racket but that said it demands so much of the user in terms of lining it up. And the depth that came with the racket when you swung freely and made a good connection was just so easy, especially on the backhand side for me. I really found like I could pick my spots and have a lot of confidence when I was going to hit the ball. I totally agree. So I think a lot of it comes from the stiffness of the frame, the thickness of the beam. It gives you a lot of energy return on each shot. I notice that more on the backhand where I have more of an abbreviated swing, but I really don't have to worry about hitting out very much because I can rely on the spin to bring the ball back down into the court. It's also important to note that all of my clips are shot at half speed and that's why the movement looks so slow. 
Yeah, I was having an issue with my camera. If we were able to accelerate to normal mode, you wouldn't actually be able to see Simon hit the ball. It's just it is a blindy fast. pace. So final thoughts on the Bablat Aero Pro Drive, customized to Rafa's spec. I think, given the specimen that I am, uh, <laughs> I really loved the feeling I got as I swung through the ball and I definitely noticed that it encouraged me to focus on footwork and making sure I got a good transfer through the ball with a balanced foot position. Is this something that you think you could play with on a regular basis? I plan on stealing it as soon as the camera's off. If you'd like to make a report on a missing battle app and help Beck it out, send it to 319. <laughs> <laughs> so once you're done talking to the police and you really want to know how you can get the most out of your tennis racket the same way Rafa gets the most out of his Aero Pro Drive, sure you're not going to get bad lot to make you a completely custom racket, but you can watch this video. So in today's video we're going to take a look at how you can get the most out of your tennis racket.